What is good, beautiful people? I'm your host, King Lion of Locks, and I have just came back from uh, watching The Matrix uh, res reserv res resolution, resolution, reservation, the the new one. Movie seemed like a it, it made jokes about itself, um, but it basically seemed like a the like a, a, the new series Star Wars. So like it, it just was not that good. Keanu Reeves made his return as Neo. Trinity's main character, I can't remember her name, came back as Trinity. The guy that played Candyman and um, there was another movie he's played in, but I can't think of his name. He came, he played as Morbius, uh, Morpheus, 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 um, which was a weird take on the movie. Um, and then we had a new cast of crew of other colorful characters. <clears throat> Um, but like I said, I give, I honestly give the movie about a six out of 10, um, in terms of a matrix movie, six out of 10, the, the plot made sense to a degree. Um, it just didn't feel like a matrix movie. This movie just seemed like, like I said, like a, a, a cash grab. Um, but without further ado, let's get into the movie. Um, to start the movie off, we are in this digital world. I know shocker. Um, and we met with a group of this these two people, one whose name is Bug and the other one, can't remember his name, um, but they are hackers into the Matrix of so the, the Rebellion. Mm, the Rebellion, um, or at least part of the old Rebellion. They're looking through this loop or this time log of a certain fight with a character that looks like Trinity um, escaping from uh, agents and civilians. And as she's trying to escape from them, this uh, cut to a black gentleman with glasses who dre who's dressed as an agent coming in to go and kill kill Trinity. <clears throat> um, which that's when we are introduced to uh, Morpheus's character. Come to find out, uh, Morpheus in the original series did not come back as Lawrence Fishburne. Lawrence Fishburne did not make his returning role as Morpheus. Um, due to the fact that if you played the games, um, which the creators of The Matrix said that one game in particular was canon to the story, uh, it was their online game, which hardly anyone played it. No, no shot to the creators of The Matrix, I'm sure. Um, their games are fun. I will honestly say that I've, out of all of the games, Path Nia was the funnest one. The rest of them were hot garbage. <clears throat> but I digress. Um, but in that game, the online one, Morpheus did not make it. He dies. So when people were wondering what happened to Morpheus, why did he not come back as his returning role as Lawrence Fishburne? That's the reason why. And the the story reason why the <clears throat> character of this, well, the the creator of this world, he created a person that looked like Morpheus, looked like him, but with the um, attitude and the uh, the I guess the job of an Andrew of a agent. Come to find out that the person that created this version of Morpheus is Thomas Anderson or Mister Anderson, aka Neo. And in this world, Neo creates a um, game of the year. His story of the Matrix. It is his story of the Matrix. Uh, when the machines brought Neo back, they used his memories to create a world for him and made him a computer games designer where he created the Matrix game. Or, uh, how I like to think, an updated version of The Path of Neo um, on the PS5 engine. Oh, what just happened? Yeah, this is what they wanted. They said they were fine with your theoretical mumbo jumbo, but they needed some sexy yeah, action. The... God damn! That's that's the world Neo created, um, but yeah, he he creates the Matrix basically in in the game form and wins a bunch of wars, becomes a world renowned, uh, famous game designer. Um, this is where the Matrix movie gets real meta, um, because in this world, his boss wants him to create another game, and how they set it up is that. 
They said that, hey, I know you said that you would never make another, you'd never make another Matrix. You'll never want to be like uh, connected to another Matrix. And I know how the the company itself, the company at Warner Brothers told us that they, they're going to green like this and they're going to make another Matrix with or without you. And he was and like, Neo was like, they can't do this. Um, I, I, I told him I didn't want to be a part of this. And that's when you realize that Neo or Keanu Reeves is basically talking to the viewers about how he technically didn't want this movie to be, um, at least in my head, Kenan, he didn't want this movie to come out. He didn't want to make another Matrix movie. Um, it kind of felt like the, the movie ended on the high note, as well as like it kind of like it was a nice little bow on it. Um, which is why I, there's a certain article that says that he doesn't mind, he doesn't care if you cozy this movie or not. Um, which I, I could kind of see why. Um, they, at the first hour of the movie, hour and 30 minutes of it, um, it doesn't really look like a Matrix movie. It's not, it doesn't have that green tint to it. Um, everything's very, very bright and colorful, especially Morbius, uh, Morpheus 2.0. This man, he wears every single brightly colored suit like he got out of the Steve Harvey collection. Like old school Lawrence Fishburne Morpheus, Morpheus, he had on just that that one outfit with the glasses. He, everything he said had a purpose. He just had this certain je ne sais quoi about himself. Just this this aura. New Morpheus, he he's not a bad character for him, but I feel like old boy was trying too hard. Like he was just in anything brightly colored, just trying to show out. Just just like hey, don't forget I'm in here too. It just it just didn't work with the the character, um, but yeah, they back to what I was saying. They asked him to make another Matrix game, and as he's trying to come up with um, ideas for this game, um, he's starting to relapse um, because this Neo suffers from um, PTSD, or uh, what he was told was that he tried to jump off a building and he almost died. Uh, Come to find out that he he did try to jump off that building, but he didn't fall. The program itself saved him, um, which is when we are introduced to the architect um, or Neil Patrick Harris's character. He is basically the big bad of the of this world. He's the one keeping Neo and Trinity in this world, so that way they can help power the Matrix. Because in his words, um, the old system of the Matrix was not working. That the 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 robots. Um, or the, I guess, androids or whatever you want to call them, were putting in more power just to keep the their energy supply or us humans happy as opposed to just letting them just run free. Or I guess not run free, but just run without having to worry about them realizing that they're in a dream world. So what Neil did was he set the world to affect humans' as, um, humans fear and their anxiety so like whenever you have a nightmare or you feel like you had a really bad dream, that's that's their version of setting your output to the maximum level. So um, whatever we, which is, it's, it's kind of hard to explain. Basically, the more fucked up we are, the more we like have anxieties or stress about something, the more energy output we are doing to try and fix it. And so the more energy that we put out, the more energy that they're able to use, basically in a nutshell. Um, and so when Neo had died in the first movie, uh, Neil had to convince his higher ups to not only bring them back, but use them as a power source. And whenever he tried to bring, uh, Neo back, Neo's, um, his ID code or what his bio code would not work until he brought over Trinity and brought her back, which is why they brought Trinity, uh, back them together. Um, worked out and gave enough energy to power the whole matrix as long as that there are just close enough to be in each other's presence but not close enough to um overload the system and so they would they would be in their own his and her pod um at the top of this tower so that way they could power um the whole matrix um but like i mentioned um uh, Neo is having these 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 um triggers or he's having these 
these flashbacks of memories of the past and he's like these memories feel so real um this the game that i created that feels like i draw from personal experience and he was like no these are just what you you wrote down that you have a very very strong imagination and this is why you thought that you could do all the things that you could do because your imagination your mind made you think that um we were also introduced to uh neil's boss his biggest supporter of the matrix he was like yes i'm, I'm so happy that you were able to create this um and it's like as they're doing his scenes they're also paralleling parallel parallel the first encounter with uh, Agent Smith, um, which for Matrix fans know that Neo and Agent Smith, they were like two halves of the same coin. Um, but whenever, whatever this his boss would say, it was, would also come through the same tone as uh, Agent Smith would say. And it didn't take you. It didn't take long to realize that his boss um, was either a version of Agent Smith or Agent Smith exactly. Um, Come to find out, it is Agent Smith. When uh, Morpheus is trying to uh, convince Neo to come with him, there was a there was a big gunfight. Um, the agents and the swarms, which instead of there being just now regular old agents, um, Neo just made a bunch of human sleeper cells. But as I was saying, uh, Morpheus is, is mowing down all the uh, security guards and neil's boss or agent smith sees a gun and he starts to do the whole switch over thing he picks up the gun and he gives the weakest mr anderson i have ever heard in my entire life i i don't know the reason for why they didn't i okay canon wise they needed to hide everyone's ip code um so that way that the humans could not find neo or trinity that makes sense uh, for whatever reason, he also Neil also changed Agent Smith's face, um, so Agent Smith didn't look like Agent Smith, but he still acted like Agent Smith. Um, I don't know the actual real reason why they didn't hire back the actor that played Agent Smith, but I kind of feel like they should have just did that. Even though I will say that this version of Agent Smith had more um, redeeming, I guess, redeeming roles than the old one. But I'll go into that. Um, but yeah, old agent, uh, this new version of Agent Smith was about to shoot uh, Neil, not Neil, was about to shoot Neo. Um, but Neo went back, somehow went back to Neil's house, um, explained to him what happened. Neil told him that it was all in his head and that he was just um, hallucinating and then to go back home um, and he'll be okay. Neil, Neil, Neo. Neo takes that uh, literal, he went back home and he drunk himself. He was getting ready to jump um, when he is reintroduced, well, when we are reintroduced to Bug, uh, this chick that was at the beginning of the first, uh, beginning of the movie and telling him, and told him that, hey, don't jump. You know, it was because of you that I was able to get free myself. Um, she explains to him what the Matrix is. Um, they get him free yada 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 back to their home their village basically um that's when we find out that the that neil has been um asleep for over 60 years the reason for why he has an age robots rebuild him <clears throat> they slow down his aging process the vat is like the lazarus pit it's a MacGuffin, basically. They don't really go into detail as to why he didn't age. He just aged really, really slow. Before they go back to the village, um, Neo also gets told that the the machines and the humans now live in, in as one, or at least co coincide. Um, they they now have either a nanotech bodies, which is the body that like Morbius uses whenever he comes to the human world, or they are like the sentinel droids and they just hover around. Kind of look like a uh, Fallout 4 Mr. Handy. Um, they just hover around and everything. Go back to the village and we are introduced to one of the returning cast members besides Neo and Trinity. Uh, Miss Entanglement herself, uh, Jada Pickett Smith. Um, but this time she is old and she lets Neo know that while she is happy that he's alive, she cannot allow him to go and try and rescue Trinity to endanger their village. Um, so they lock him up for about a good five minutes. Then they bust, then um, Neil gets busted out. 
and he goes back to try and rescue Kennedy. So the <clears throat> action scenes of this movie um, were a little hit and miss. Normally with Neo, he basically st uh, steamrolls every combatant, one-handed, sometimes two-handed, sometimes with the weapon, sometimes he uses his force push, sometimes he, he flies away. This movie basically reset the whole Matrix story, giving us a, for the most part, a weak Neo. With his fight scenes, the man is 50, probably older than 50, so that's understandable. Um, the, the, the scenes that they use, the stunt, uh, stunt double for it to help him out, um, if they use one, because I know he, he did a lot of his stunts for John Wick, so I don't, I won't say a lot of his stunts, but most of his stunts for John Wick he was able to do. So I, I don't see him switching out so much with a, a stunt double. But the man, can, the man can't do as much as he used to do when he was original Neo. With that being said, I kind of feel like they, they relied heavily on the fact that he could force push. Because whenever he had the chance, he was force pushing everything. People, bodies, bullets, uh, missile launchers destroying whole whole buildings you name it he he force pushed it basically um there was a fight scene where he was fighting uh mr anderson and some of the old cast members from the second matrix movie uh for whatever reason they escaped the beat the the big purge because when neil took over as the new architect for the matrix he purged out all of the um the odds and ends of the old matrix programming so that's why there was no Oracle this this time around. Um, a lot of the uh, the weird uh, codes or the the um, people that went through buildings they were no longer there in the movie. It was basically just all regular people. But yeah, he's he's fighting these he's fighting um, Agent Smith and all these corrupted codes. And for the most part, he's a little sluggish. Um, he's able to force push and everything. Whenever you mention Trinity, he's able to. Um, unleash a big uh, psychic blast, but for the most part, that's about it for Neo. He doesn't; he's not really doing any of his Neo Neo stuff, and he doesn't really do that for most of the movie. Hell, even at the end of the movie, um, he flies away, but it's it's kind of like the end of Neo One, where he's like, "I'm going to show these people what you can do," and he just flies off. Yeah. So the fight scene happens. We. Go look for Trinity. He finds Trinity, and as he's trying to tell Trinity that, hey, the character in my game is you, um, and this is why I feel this way because I because we were together. Nail Neil comes back in and lets lets Neo Neo Nail as Neil Barney. I'm gonna refer to him as Barney. So when I say Nail or when I say Barney, I'm talking about Neil. Neo is always Neo. So. Barney is telling Neo that hey, this is just uh, this is what it is. You're not gonna be able to get her out of here. You can either join back in and be plugged back in and power this matrix, or I kill you both and I cut my losses. So now for the next half of this, the next hour and a half of this movie, um, or really I think just the hour and fifteen minutes is, is a rescue mission. Um, how we're gonna get Trinity out of here and re and rescue her. So their plan to get Trinity out of out of the world is to hijack her. Have Neo convince her to leave, and if she's able to leave on her own, then they can get her out of there, out of the world that she's in right at the moment. And at first, it's a little hard because the architect has given her kids and a family, and so when Neo's trying to convince her to leave, let her know that this world is not real, her kids come in and they ask her, hey, you need to come with us. Um, grandma has gotten her arm broken. Uh, our auntie got stuck in the dryer. Something up to that nature. And as he's as they're trying to take her away, she snaps out of this. She breaks out of their control, and Neil or sorry, and Barney starts a big uh, mosh pit attack. He sends all of the. Uh, sleeper cells to swarm mode and they come on and, and they start to attack the rebellion as the team is trying to repel this swarm of people and sleeper cells um 
we are introduced to a well not introduced we are, we are led with a scene where uh, trinity is driving a bike and neil's in the back and he's basically just like i mentioned before force pushing anything and everything out the way and at some times some scenes of it looks cool like there's a scene where he's he force stops a car as trinity uh hops on it on her tire and drives over it there are other scenes that don't look as cool when there's a mob of people jumping off buses and he just force pushes them out the way. He force punches someone like Naruto does when he's in sage mode. Um, there's scenes where he's kind of um, stopping bullets, a rain of bullets, not like how he did in the Matrix 2 where he's one hand in it. He's like panicking. Um and then there's this the scene where he's he curves a whole rocket into another uh, helicopter. It, it I felt like the what made the force push or force stop so memorable or so cool is the fact that he only busted it out at when he absolutely needed to do it. Like when there's a row of gunsmen and he, they're shooting lining up uh execution style and they're shooting at him and he just one hand behind his back stopping all the bullets or when there's a bunch of Aiden Smiths and they're about to kill him and he has awakened and he can see the code and he stops the bullets or hell when he's in the real world and he has to escape um, the sentinels coming at him not only once but in twice in two different occasions and he's able to stop them or make a path. Those were memorable moments when he had to use it. Now it just seemed like he just used it whenever he was bored. Like it was, it was ridiculous. It made it not look as special. It, it basically, you basically were playing the, the Matrix Path of Neo game. That's what this basically what this movie was. It was the beginning portion of the Neo game, and you just were able to force push everything. It was basically that. Um, <clears throat> but yeah. They, Neo and Trinity are on top of the tower after they escape the, the two helicopters and Trinity tells Neo that, hey, this is where my dream, and my dream end. And when she originally told him about his, her dream, she said that something bad happens in their dream that they don't make it. And so Neo tells Trinity, we can't go back. And she says, not back to there. And they jump off the building. Now, it's at this point that you think that, okay, Neo's going to fly, or they plan to die, which I would hope they didn't plan to die because I feel like that was a waste of uh, manpower and resources because everyone spent everything they could to get them out of there. Luckily, no one died, which was different for a Matrix movie. Um, but if the fact that they sacrificed everything they could to make sure that they got them out of there, if they died, it kind of was it would have been a bummer. But... Just when they're about to fall, Trinity learns how to fly like Neo does. And they fly out of there and they get disconnected. <clears throat> and that's that's really the end of that climax. Um, fast forward, we go back to Neil's house or Barney's house. And Trinity flies in after she ripped a big hole into the side of the house. Um, she kicks his mouth off. She kicks Barney's mouth off, basically treating him like how the cast of How I Met Your Mother treated Barney whenever he tried to do anything that was a legend. Wait for it. Three slaps remaining. Three slaps. Wow, I like the sound of that. I think I'll save those bad boys, you know, for a rainy day. Okay, the worst is over. <laughs> Dairy, um, and they beat the shit out of him. They kicked his mouth off. They cut his throat. Um, they ran him into a wall, and 
each time he was he responded like Barney basically. He was like, Can you control your woman? I'm sorry. Um how did I know you were gonna be such a bitch? Barney replies. Um and when when Trinity has gotten all her frustrations out, uh Neil says, What you gonna do now? You're gonna go rebuild this world? Go ahead, fine. But the sheeple will stay where they're at. And the and Neil and Trinity both laughed. They said that they just wanted to thank him for bringing them back, giving them a second chance, so that way they can fix everything. And then they fly away. End credits. So I don't know if they're going to plan to make a second one. I really hope that they don't, because like I mentioned before, this movie basically was a cash grab. And while it made sense in a way that they they were meta as hell with it where they they basically told people they basically told you up front that hey this movie is a cash grab we didn't want to do this but our the people that own own us basically own this movie they wanted another one out um here you go yes it may not be the same as what you thought it was going to be uh, which I will say that, like I mentioned before, it was very, very bright for the first hour and hour and 15 minutes. But that other 15 hour and 15 minutes, it wasn't grintly tinted puke. Um, and I say that the most caring way as possible. Um, but it was a little darker. It was a little darker. But yeah, it it was not a it was not a Matrix movie. It wasn't even a a good Matrix movie. I, I came into the movie expecting it to be hot garbage. Um, so my expectations for it was low. Um, and even then I was like, okay, at the end of the day, Keanu Reeves was doing two movies back to back. He was doing this and he was doing John Wick. So I was thinking, okay, if this movie is going to be asked, then I know John Wick is going to be, um, it's going to be good. It's going to be good. So I'm hoping that John Wick is good to make this sour taste in my mouth go away. But if, for whatever reason, John Wick is hot ass too. I I might cry. I might cry. Um, but yeah, I would say if you guys haven't seen this new Matrix movie, eh, um, take it, leave it. Um, I I would honestly say you won't lose anything for it. The original, the original trilogy was probably the was was the better one, and the ending to it made more sense to it than the the third one than this one. Um, but hey, if you are a masochist like myself and you want to go see the movie, please go ahead and see it. But yeah, um, tell me what you guys think about the movie down below, and I'll catch you again later. Peace.